Hey guys, today I'm working with a matching Whirlpool washer and electric dryer set. Right now I've got it filling up just a normal load here. It's also got casual delicates and hand washables, which are a little bit lighter uh, on the agitation. Nine cycles, five speed combinations, tons of options on your load size. So this is your water control, temperature control. And uh, of course you have extra rents in the end of cycle signal, all controllable on or off. There you go, super capacity plus on both these guys. We got filling up right now, pretty heavy jeans and towels underneath their load. And uh, let's stop this real quick. Yeah, so you can see, I'll try to do this one handy just to turn it back on. The water fill works perfectly. Of course the washer gets a 28 point inspection. Everything electrical, mechanical, it all gets checked and everything has to work perfectly before it leaves my care here. But uh, all these knobs and everything like that get checked and I just like to show it off as if you were standing here yourself testing it out. Everything works perfectly. So we'll let this go ahead, finish filling up, then I'll show you that it's going to agitate correctly, drains the water out, and has a nice, smooth, and fast final spin cycle. Then we'll move the clothes over to the dryer and show you that the dryer sounds great, um, heats appropriately, and all that good stuff. So we'll let it fill up and we'll come back. Okay, we filled up. Now we're agitating, we've got a nice strong agitation. You can see there, everything's getting nice and clean. And that agitator is only supposed to spin one direction, which it is currently moving clockwise. Now if you could reach your hand in there and spin it freely counterclockwise, then your agitator is actually broken and not working correctly. Little tip that I like to throw out there. All right. All right, moving out of the rinse cycle into the final spin cycle, you can hear it draining that water out nice and fast. It's in neutral cycle right now, so it's not spinning, but the pump is running, getting the water out. So as soon as it's done, it's gonna switch over and start spinning. And so I'll go ahead and pause it for the sake of time here and come back at its fastest spin. We'll lift the lid up. Of course, the lid switch will engage and shut it down but you'll be able to see that it's spinning nice and fast. All right, and here it is spinning at top speed. Go ahead and you can see it's nice, smooth. Sounds great. Let's open that up. See, it comes to a stop. It's spinning nice and fast, lid switch works. That's gonna be it for the washer. We'll let it finish spinning out, show you the dryer. All right guys, now we move those clothes over to the dryer. I've got it running on time dry, high heat. Uh, doesn't matter on or off for the wrinkle shield and then signal cycle on and off there. Seven cycles, also super capacity plus on this guy. We'll do a little touch up on the top and you'll be able to see that in the pictures. It'll look like new again. Um, so we'll go ahead and open this up here. Show you the light works good. Everything's in there. Tumbling real good, so. See in here, it starts perfectly. Sounds great. Nice smooth operation. Then I'm gonna show you that it is in fact heating like it's supposed to. So right in between those two red dots, it's gonna take a Fahrenheit temperature measurement, a surface temperature measurement. You can see the difference here, whether I shine it on the floor or up here on the dryer. And so what I'm gonna do is shine it right inside the heating element tube here, you see. Plenty of heat coming out of that tube there. Now there, the heat inside this tube will get anywhere up to 350, 400 degrees, but the inside of your dryer is only gonna heat up from about 95 to 195. And that just depends on what you have the setting here. So you also have a setting for delicates if you wanted that 95. Uh, you also have air dry here as well. So we'll stick it on high to get those clothes nice and dry. And of course you always wanna make sure uh, on the back where the hose goes, that from where the hose hooks into the wall all the way out to where it shoots out outside the house. Make sure you get that cleaned as well. Some, I use a leaf blower, but it's very important, especially if your old dryer stopped heating correctly or it took two or three cycles. A lot of that can be the internal cleaning of the dryer, but nine times out of 10, you can put a new dryer in there and still have trouble uh, getting the heat that you need for one go around on the drying. 
and that's because you've got a clog in your ventilation. So while you're swapping out your dryers, make sure you get that taken care of as well. Super easy. Um, that's going to be it for these guys. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. I do appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. Um, thanks and have a great day.